Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here, and today I want to talk with you about eight legal ways to beat Baccarat that are not card counting the player or banker bets. I have a um, little PowerPoint presentation where I have all these things listed, so let's just go right to that. So before I get started with this, the eight ways, there is one overriding principle that um, we have to cover. And that is that we're not talking about voodoo in any sense. And I've enumerated voodoo elsewhere, but just to remind you, we're not talking about trying to track patterns or timing or progression systems, about some lucky charm, about the number eight, about someone's birthday, about what we ate, where, when we went to the bathroom, and any of these things that are part of the huge volume of nonsense that accompanies Bakra. None of that is what we're gonna talk about. We are talking about mathematically sound methods to beat the game of Bakra. so let's get right to it. So, the first method is to beat the tie bet. Now, I said we weren't gonna card count the player or banker bets, but it turns out that there is an effective system to card count the tie bet. Now this system only works when the tie bet pays nine to one, which it does not do in most casinos internationally. You'll have to find a casino where that happens. And it really helps if you have a deeply dealt game. So a cut card placed at 14 cards or less from the end. Um, in those sorts of situations, if you're willing to put a lot of money on the line, you can win a little bit of money. So I'm covering this one first because it is the smallest and weakest method. Um, in some situations, there may be other ways you can beat the tie bet, either by what's called an end play or by tracking, for example, a slug of face cards. So if you think about a method to beat Baccarat, that is just right inside of the game itself. The tie bet is the wager that you can beat outright with um, a lot of money and a lot of luck. All right, so what about other bets? Well, the next one that comes to mind here is the pair side bet. And this side bet is um, available internationally. It usually is available for very high uh, house maximums. The house edge on this bet is over 10%. You can bet on either the player or the banker side to be a, a pair. But this wager is extremely vulnerable to a specialized card counting system that I developed called Targets and Weights. You can find that on my website, advancedadvantageplay.com. Um, just look it up on AP Heat over at 888Casino, and you'll find... Um, a description of this method. It takes a little bit of work and practice to be able to pull it off in a casino. But for those who want to cheat, there are specialized um, apps you can download onto your smartphone. I have made a uh, spreadsheet that does these computations. The math is easy. That spreadsheet's publicly available. I think of those things as more valuable for the casino security side surveillance that wants to see whether a player is doing anything funny or not. But definitely the pairs bet is the next thing that I would say um, after the tie. It's going to be just widely available and widely beatable. In fact, I'd say it is more profitable by um, a good factor of 10 over the tie bet. So it's something that is definitely a possibility for everyone who um, thinks about beating the game. Okay, so what comes next? Well, there's other side bets. I know that the Dragon 7 side bet where we're talking about um, a banker three card winning seven, paying 40 to one, is what most people think about when they think about beating other side bets. But I'll have to say that internationally there are some crushable side bets. And the one that comes to mind is the so-called Your Way Egalite side bet that's available at casinos in the UK. I've written extensively about this again. Just um, use your friend Google and you will find my detailed work on that. But there are definitely some side bets out there that um, you can beat just outright. Again, by card counting usually, but this is not card counting the player banker bet. It is actually a profitable thing to try and do. 
All right, what comes next? Well, Bill Ivey, edge sorting, right? Um, looking or knowing some information about the first card. So many decks of cards, uh, in fact, most decks have some um, obvious defect in the pattern around the edge of the card where one side is um, asymmetric to the other. And simply by rotating the card so that high cards have that defect on one side and low cards have the defect on the other side, you'd be able to read the first card of the shoe. And you may see that card, for example, before um, the next hand is dealt. You may see the shoe look something like this, and you can see right along, along this bottom edge here is a readable pattern that may have the asymmetry one direction or another. As far as the, as the mechanics of how you get the shoe sorted when you're not allowed to touch the cards, that's where you need the magic that Phil Ivey and his partner um, made it happen. So I am not gonna go into any of the details of how that came to pass, but let me just say, this is the actual strategy and the edge you get. So the low cards are ace, two, three, four, five, and a zero valued card. If you see a low card, you wanna make a bet on banker. If you see a high card, six, seven, eight, or nine, you will bet on the player side. And if you manage to sort the cards or have some other mechanism to identify the top card, you'll get about a 6.765% edge over the house. That is a huge edge. You can do a lot of damage um, to casino if you happen to have some ability to know what the first card is. Now, you may not know the first card, you may just know some card. And what is surprising is that um, there have been instances internationally where teams have just focused on knowing one card out of the 416 cards in an eight deck shoe, knowing the exact position of one card and waiting patiently for that one card um, to come through the shoe until it came into the window where it may be played in the next hand. It became one of the next six cards, so it may arise in the next hand. And based on knowledge of one single card, millions of dollars have been taken from casinos uh, internationally. So if you know one card, there's a strategy that um, this is a, a situation uh, where during the cut card process, for example, you may see that one card and I have, again, written an article on known card strategies, and it's available on my website, advancedadvantageplay.com, if you want more details about this method. So here are the actual edges that you get. So for example, if we know a nine is the first card to come out, well, that card's gonna go to the player position, right? So we'll have a 21.528, percent edge over the house if we know a nine is the first card and we bet on player. So you can see that in every card um, that we may know, in every position, there is an associated edge that the player can get. There are only two situations where the player does not get an edge, the advantage player over the house. That's when a five is in the second or fourth position or when an eight is in the fifth position. I'm sorry, there's one more, a two in the sixth position. In every other case, we can get an edge over the house. Okay, again, the complete strategy is listed on my website for this. What comes next? Well, loss rebates. Loss rebates, of course, the, were made famous by Don Johnson. Here in the United States, practically any player who's willing to put a million dollars into the bank um, will be offered at least a 15, possibly a 20% rebate on their losses. So the key to exploiting a loss rebate initiative is just not playing very long, trying to get away with very short sessions after which you can claim your rebate. I have done research on a loss rebate um, strategy against Bakra, and let me just show you what the details of that are right here. This may be a little bit hard for you to read, so let me just go um, right now to a full screen and hopefully that will help you make a little bit more out of this um, spreadsheet. But for example, just to show you how this spreadsheet works, if you were offered a 20% a um, loss rebate, 
and you were making wagers that were $100,000 in size, then your strategy would be to either leave after losing $550,000 or leave after having won $400,000. On average, to reach one of those two exit points would take you about 26 hands. So if you think at 30 hands an hour, that's a little bit under an hour. On average, you will um, win, you're, you're going to generate $27,973 in casino theoretical win, after all the casino has an edge, but your average rebate is going to be a little over $50,000, meaning your net average win is a little bit over $22,500. So for one hour's worth of work, you can expect to win about um, between twenty-two and twenty-three thousand dollars on average. So, if you think that's a good hourly rate, I would agree with you. Um, and this table right here pretty much tells you, depending on your rebate, what stopping points you should have for your hundred thousand uh, dollar wager. You can scale that up or down as you like, but you'll see that the higher the rebate, the greater the amount we are beating the casino. So. Warning to every casino that offers loss rebates, watch your players who play very short sessions. So you can see that with a 10% rebate, we only are playing on average four rounds, 4.4 rounds. All right, that's about as good as it gets. Um, the next way you can beat Bakra, of course, is just to play against the marketing and promotions the casino offers, whether it's the match play coupons, their, their extra point days if they're on a point system, promotional chips, giveaways, drawing tickets, shows, rooms, meals, and so on. So playing against marketing is certainly something people have done forever, and it still works. Casinos have gotten considerably more stingy, but you can still beat them based on marketing and promotions if you are very careful and selective in how you uh, proceed. And finally, um, there, there are Bakra novelty games. So new versions of Bakra are forever finding their ways into casinos, and some of these can just be beaten right off the top. I'm thinking of a game called 7-Up Bakra that was at Marina Bay Sands maybe eight or ten years ago um, that people would just crush that game by card counting the sevens in the shoe. It did not last very long there um, before they put the cut card about halfway through the shoe to protect the game. And I'm not sure today whether the game still exists or not, but if you just pay attention, you may find a Bakra novelty game that is highly beatable. So, all right, everybody. Um, hopefully this has helped you sort of figure out what you're going to do when you want to um, play against Bakra, whether you want to study a little bit one of these valid methods to beat the game or not, um, or you want to continue to just believe voodoo, which I hope you will quickly get that out of your head. Um, these are mathematically viable ways to beat the game of Baccarat. If you're in surveillance and somebody is doing something funny, hopefully this list provides you some options to consider for what they may be doing. All right, everybody. This is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.